You are now listening to a message from Eka Christian Center. Get set to be at the fire. God has blessed you. What? And ah, guys, doctor. For it is what? It is he that giveth the power to get well, that he may establish his covenant, which is well unto thy fathers as it is this day. Now, we've said that the purpose of wealth is not self-aggrandizement. The purpose of wealth is not to show your village people that you have made it. The purpose of wealth is redistribution. The purpose of wealth is to establish the covenant. We established that, all right, and said that the past two, um, two Sundays. But now, let's now look at that power to get wealth. The power to get well here is in twofold. It is either the wisdom of God or the grace of God. The wisdom of God or the grace of God. For example, you have the children of Israel when they were living in Egypt, that the Egyptians, they found grace inside of the Egyptians, and the Egyptians, you know, gave them all the things that they asked for that's the grace of God they didn't work for what the Egyptians gave them the Egyptians just volunteered and gave it to them that is an operation of the grace of God but there is also the operation of the wisdom of God which I want to focus on today the reason why I want to focus on the wisdom of God and the knowledge all right the knowledge of God when I talk about wisdom of God I'm not talking about in context of supernatural things uh, you know I'm talking about the wisdom of God in natural dealings glory to God all right? The wisdom of God in natural dealings. Okay? The reason why I want to focus on that is because a lot of Christians don't like wisdom. They like grace. Praise the Lord. They like, you know, as you go on the street, somebody's going to meet you and give you 50 million naira. If I say, as you leave this place, somebody will give you 50 million naira. Everybody say, amen! You, the place will thunder. We like that. But we don't, what we don't like and what we don't appreciate is the wisdom to receive 50 million naira. The wisdom to produce 50 million naira. The wisdom to produce a billion, a billion naira. You have people sowing seeds to become billionaire. You don't become billionaires by sowing seed. Come on, man. Amen? No, let's be silly. You don't become a billionaire by sowing seeds. Anyone that tells you that is lying to you. It become, you become a, I'm not talking about a Nigerian billionaire. I'm talking of a billionaire. Amen? How many of you know the difference? Yeah, a Nigerian billionaire with chronic capitalism and corruption, you can be a billionaire. Come on. Hey. I mean, it's just, you know, one corrupt deal away. And when we say, let us check the source of your wealth, hey, when, when I was poor, were you investigating my poverty? You know, those kind of nonsense. That would be say. But it's a Nigerian billionaire. I saw that lot across some Nigerian billionaires. They are stupid, man. They don't know what they are saying. They don't even know how they made their money. They can't explain anything about money. Just, they say it's the blessings of God. Shut up. It's corruption. Hallelujah. Now let's continue. The wisdom of God. Look at Proverbs 24, verse 4. You have to go for wisdom. For prosperity is first and foremost about being before it is about having. Such that you can prosper in any location. If they put you in Canada, you can prosper. If they put you in United Kingdom, you can prosper. If in Nigeria, you can prosper. It's about being, it's about the know how, the capacity. That is first. That's what we need to sort out first. Amen? So, that's wisdom. Proverbs 24, verse 4. It says, And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Knowledge. So, knowledge is in the increase equation. Knowledge and skill is in the increase and abundance equation. Do not be a Christian that does not have wisdom and knowledge. Amen? Amen. Don't be saying stupid things like, now that one we go chop. That's silly. No. You go for knowledge. You go for wisdom. When I sit across you, I should be able to eat from the knowledge that's coming out of your mouth. Glory to God. Look at another scripture. Proverbs chapter number 8, from verse 12 to 21. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. I'm going to move fast. Media, you need to help me. Proverbs 8, 12 to 21. Oh, my God, we yeah. didn't do our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> ah, nah. Nah, we got to do it. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. First time, as I'm so sorry. We have a ritual we do. I got carried away by the worship. Can I see your Bibles? 
Lift up your Bibles. Raise it up in the air and say with me, this is my Bible. I am what he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly declare, I am not a forgetful hearer, but I am a doer of the word. Amen. All right, good. So that Bible you raised up, turn it to Proverbs chapter 8 <laughs> and verse 12. Proverbs 8 and 12. Are we there? Ah, yes. Read. Want to go? I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. See that? Now, what it says about wisdom. Continue reading. Next verse. It says what? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Uh huh. Continue reading. Uh huh. And the from I do away. So that means the man of wisdom does not find himself in the evil way. You don't do um, evil things to get money. You understand? That is not the, the way of wisdom. Let's continue. Next verse 14 says what? Counsel is mine. Are you seeing that? And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have what? Strength. Next verse, 15 says what? By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. Next verse, 16. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Next verse says what? I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Wisdom. You want to have a good head start as a young man, as a young woman, go after wisdom, go, go, go after knowledge. Hallelujah. All right? Because the power to get wealth is in wisdom and knowledge. Glory to God. It is one aspect, all right, of the grace of God. It's one aspect of the manifestation, manifestation of God, wisdom and knowledge. As great as powerful God is, he did not create the earth without dimensions. You can measure the diameter of the earth. You can measure the speed of rotation of the earth around the sun. Every single thing has precise measurement. That's the wisdom of God. So, the revelation of God is seen both in his wisdom and in his power, not just in his power alone. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, it's very, very important that as a Christian, you are balanced. You have that approach. You recognize the power of God and the place of the grace of God, but you go after wisdom. You go after knowledge. You go after skill. Amen. You will not have a perfect expression of the glory of God within you with an uneducated, unskilled, and unwise mind. That un uneducated mind, the unskilled mind, will um, damn the flow of the glory of God from your spirit. It will affect its manifestation. So you must go for wisdom. You must go for understanding. Now, let me give you the definition of wisdom. All right and the definition of knowledge, then we will now get to the difference. Write this down. Wisdom is insight and perfect understanding. Wisdom is insight and perfect understanding. I'm going to make it simple. I'm not going to complicate it. Wisdom is insight and perfect understanding. Right? So it's insight. What is insight? To see what others cannot see. Or to see it, because insight, there is foresight in insight. To see what others cannot see and to see it before others. All right? Both insight and foresight is powered by understanding. I'll give you an example. For example, uh, in, right now, the Nigerian Naira, what's the exchange rate this morning? 1,000 what? Five what? Uh, okay, let's take 1,560. But you see, people who had understanding about how markets work knew that the exchange rate was going to 1,560 three years ago. They knew. They already knew. And many people who played in investment and all that, they shorted the Naira. And so because they shorted the Naira, now that the Naira has been devalued, they made a lot of money. Understanding. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you have understanding about things, well, you're going to have insight and you have foresight. And because a lot of people are roaming the streets without understanding, if you have it, you have an advantage. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
Inflation currently, it's, it's not financial prosperity, so I have to talk on you know, metrics now. Inflation is currently 34%. What that means is that every single Naira that you hold within one year loses 34% of its value. Are you following what I'm saying? Which means if you don't know certain things and you don't do certain things, every single time that you just have money, cash, in your account, you are losing money. You are getting poorer. Are you following? So a man of understanding, based on insight and foresight, will do certain things now that will give him an edge in 365 days, two years, three years, four years, five years. Are you getting it? That's wisdom. Wisdom is insight and perfect understanding. Now let's go to the definition of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is illumination about the subject matter. It's just illumination. You know, it's illumination about the subject matter. You have the facts, you have the figures. It's knowledge. But a man can be full of knowledge and lack wisdom. Because wisdom is the application or the correct application of knowledge. Why knowledge is about knowing, wisdom is about doing. Do you get the difference now? Do you get the difference now? Uh -huh. Why knowledge is about knowing, wisdom is about doing. It's about implementation. Right? Expressions of knowledge include skill, you know. You could have a talent that you have refined, right? But when it comes to wisdom, we are not talking about skill. We are talking about product and services created due to that knowledge of the skill that you have. So, while a person could know how to play the keyboard, which is knowledge and skill, if he does not understand the business around playing the keyboard, he does not have wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm saying? A man could be a medical doctor and have the knowledge about medicine. He's a doctor. He understands the knowledge of medicine, but does not understand the business of medicine. He does not understand the value chain around health. So if he does not understand the value chain about health, or the business around health, and all he knows is what? S1, S2. Madam, you have fever. You have malaria. He will be poor. They will pay him 200,000 naira every single month, and he's going to do 3 PP every month to survive. He will do 8 to 9, then you do 9 to 5, then you do weekend to collect 600,000 naira. Just to be able to afford a two bedroom flat or a room self contained in Yaba. Because he has a knowledge of medicine, but does not understand the business of medicine. So, wisdom results in the creation of product and services. Are you getting it? So, products and services that function and serve an ecosystem. Oh boy, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just calm down. Amen. So, you've got the definition, right? No, this service is not usual. So, please pay attention. I'll make sure you listen to it again and again. Because I, 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 my, this, is not my, my, this is not my calling. <laughs> you understand? So, I have things that I'm going to do. But pay attention. It's useful. Praise God. I said, praise God. Okay, now listen. So, what takes you from knowledge to wisdom is understanding. Everybody say understanding. 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 That's what moves you from knowledge to wisdom. That's what moves you from BSc in accounting to somebody that leads an FI. There are a lot of people that have under, um, knowledge about accounting but are not able to create a product and service around accounting. That's the difference. Understanding is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So if you look at it, in Exodus 31 verse 3, Exodus 35 and 31, and Deuteronomy 1 verse 13, you will find out that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are mentioned in the same breath. Because in the, in the creative spectrum of God, those three things are vital. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You need to have those three. They are the triplets of creativity. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You need to have those three things, all right, working in the right measure, in the right degree, for you to be able to, you know, uh, you know be said to um, 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 flow at the, you know, creative frequency of God. Hallelujah. 
I said, hallelujah. Okay, so if material prosperity or prosperity works properly, material increase should be a byproduct of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It should be a byproduct of it. Any society that works should function in such a way that people prosper based off, or based, based off you know, their knowledge work, their wisdom work, and their understanding work. That's how it should be. But when you have a corrupt system like you have in Nigeria, where somebody, like a senator, I know, that has like a hundred luxury cars in his compound of politics, then you are going to have a system that is chaotic like Nigeria, where there will be no development. Because you have people that have a lot of money, but don't have a lot of sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because what should happen is that I should be making money from products and services. So my products and services are translating to cash, and people are patronizing those products and services, and it's leading to cash. Are you following what I'm saying? But when somebody is doing absolutely nothing but getting rewarded for it, it is going to perpetuate a culture of people, look, people looking to do absolutely nothing and becoming rich. And when you have a lot, a, a lot of people who are of that kind, you have Yahoo, Yahoo guys, you have the ecosystem of corruption. The politician on one side, pastors on one side, Yahoo, Yahoo on one side, you know, everybody. Everybody just in this giant pot of corruption. Wanting to get something out of nothing. And they will call it grace. Ah, that guy, he get grace. Which guy? He said, Yahoo guy. <laughs> you understand? Ah, the grace passed my own. The grace, the grace, the grace. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So you have the ritualist. Everybody's looking for that grace. You want something. We need to kill that mindset. It must not be inside church. You understand? Now, when we're looking at the grace and favor of God, it is the grace and favor of God upon the walk. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh So we are doing something. We now want the reign of favor on it. That's what it should be. Glory to God. Let's continue. Now, media, can you please put up that slide? Let me take you to class. Understanding finance. Understanding money. Basics of it. It's not anything deep because we don't have that much time. Glory to God. Yes. So, let's say I'm using Stevante. Stevante is a fashion designer. She's here, member of our church. So, I'm using Stevante as an example. A lot of us are blessed by God but we are not able to manage it. Media, I'm using style to give you time to put it up. Praise God. In case you don't catch my drift. I'm trying to explain it. Now, hmm. let me use this example. How many of you love rain? Rain. Like when rain falls. Uh-uh. Church, wait. Let me repeat again. Okay. I know some of you are saying, I don't like it when rain falls because the road is messed. Okay, let us assume we live in an utopian Nigerian society. The drainage work, all right? Roads are good. All things being equal. Okay, how many of you will like rain under those circumstances? Yeah, okay, good. All right. So that's that. Now, you know the rain is falling, right? Everywhere is cool. Someone was hurt. The rain falls, everywhere is cool. But rain is essentially water, right? Right? Now, I want us to imagine we don't have taps, we don't have rivers, we don't have lakes. What would you do when rain fell? Get enough containers. Huh? Fetch the water and stuff. You get, you get buckets and stuff and collect the rain. Is that correct? Why? Because that rain falling, all right, you don't have water. So, the rain falling, you need to do something with it. So, you get it in a bucket, then you store it. Right? So, now, you would not be able to say you lack water if there is rain. Right? Because you have created a system of storing the rain, all right, that falls from the sky. Now, there are a lot of us, eh, that actually the issue has been the inability to manage what God brought. And it's it's due to a lack of understanding of how money works. Okay? If you're in business, put your hand up. Let me see. You're a business person. Okay? Let me see. Business, business person, business. Oh, yeah, you come. You come. No, okay, two pastors are. Sevan, come. Sir, come. 
Yeah, let's look at this. Put your hands together for them. I'll make it practical. Now, you do a business. Let's say you are into... So what are you into? What business are you into? Printing. Okay, I'm into printing. Now, um, he's into printing. Let's say he gets a contract to print five million naira. Five million naira deal. Right? Now, it's five million naira, but the cost of buying what he would do to do the printing is three million naira. All right? He bought the materials, three million naira, but the contract is for five million. The LPO he received was for five million, and it's what he used to, you know, serve the LPO is three million. What is his profit? Two million is his profit. What did he spend to execute the LPO? Three million. Well, you know the thing is, he takes three million, right? Executes the LPO, but the five million payment, when they're going to pay him, it comes one, bam! So five million comes into his account, right? Come on, church. Now, what normally happens is that, because that five million comes into your account, it comes into your head as though you now have five million. Are you getting what I'm saying? But do you have five million? No. You spend three million to execute that contract. So what now happens is many people have got five million. Praise the Lord! A rent. Ah, now I want to live on the island. I don't like this place I'm living now. You understand? So that person takes the five million and goes to get a nice place, you know, something like that. Now what actually happens? Is in his mind, he thinks he's making progress, but it is this way: his rain is falling, but his decisions are collecting the rain in a basket. You understand? So, there are a lot of people here that when you go to your bank app and you download the credit inflows, you'll be surprised about, my God, did that much money pass through my account? Because of how much is left. <laughs> then, some people now, you go to a prophetic church and the person can come and say, I see you, I see you. Money doesn't stay in your heart. It's true, man of God. It's true. And the money comes in, but it has gone out. It's true, man of God. It's a demon. It's not any demon. <laughs> Praise God. So the reason I want you to start, watch is this. It's a master class. You know, everybody say, but I'm doing it because you got business people. Pay attention. Next slide. Introduction to income statements. Right? Now, look at that. Uh, okay, I used the bounty, right? Now, this is income statement. What's the first thing you see there? Revenue. Revenue is the total amount that comes into your hands. You are doing a business, even as an individual, you earn a salary, everything that comes in, that's a revenue. Some people call it gross revenue, right? Now, that is everything that comes. People paid you for it. It's not your money, all right? You didn't particularly make that. Revenue is not what you have. Revenue is what came in, okay? What do you need to see next? Cost of sale is how much you spend to generate that revenue. Do you understand? Now, it's different from administrative expenses. Cost of sale is talking about how much did you spend to generate the revenue in terms of, okay, for example, maybe you are, don't, don't let me keep you standing, sit down. Can I put an answer together for them so that they will pay attention and their leg will not be paying them? Now, listen. Maybe you are into um, hair business. Right? Cost of sale, right, is the hair, right? You bought the air. Then you had to, they had to transport the air to you. Carriage inward. So they bring it to you. You understand? Then you packaged the air. You bought some nylons and stuff and put your brand name. All those things. All those things is part of what did you, your costs to sell it. Now that is 24.2 million. So you remove that. What do you have? That's your what? Gross profit. So your gross profit is 84.2. Gross profit is still not your money. It is what you have after you've deducted how much you spent to generate the revenue. You understand? So we've not talked, so that's your gross profit. Now, gross profit is good. You know, it tells us how good you are doing. All right? This is not accounting class. I just want to just let you have some ideas. Praise God. Then after that, 
you now come to sales and general admin expenses. These sales and general expenses, that's where salaries come in. Transportation come in. You understand? Some people come and tell me something. They'll say, Pastor, I am doing business. I don't pay myself a salary. I have never moved by those statements. Should I tell you why? In my experience, anybody that tells you, I don't take a salary, they touch the business money. That's the truth. They touch the business money. So, the business money, they'll touch money, they are going for Uber. They will enter Uber. I don't take a salary. They eat Uber, it's some business money. Um, uh, they go to a restaurant. I want to spoil myself silly. I don't take a salary, but it's business money that they are using to this thing. One thing you must learn to do if you're a business person, you must separate between your business account and your personal account. You are two different people. Praise God. Are you learning something today? So says that's your salaries, fuel, if you have an office, all that, that goes in there. Then after we've deducted that, you have now what is called your EBITDA. Now, let, let me tell you, tell you, everybody here, if you're a business person, you are going to do assignments. You will go back home, you will download your statement from your bank, and you are going to generate this thing, and I want it. <laughs> yes, I want to see it. Download it, I'm telling you. It will let you have understanding of what you are doing, whether you are in business. Don't deceive yourself. Amen. Amen. I hope it will get better. Some people don't even know what they are believing for. Let us pray that our business will prosper. What does that mean? What does it mean? Is it that you will move from 50 million to 100 million? Is it from 100 to 200? You don't even know what your revenue is. Because you are receiving payments into your personal account. Every money is inside. So how do you know you're not making progress? There are certain blessings of God you will not see until God can say you are ready. I'm telling you. As a church, when we began to do this thing, we began to experience growth. Hallelujah. You need to know. You need to keep records. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, after that, now, what do you see in that EBITDA? What is EBITDA? EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxation, depreciation, and amortization. Basically, what it means is, how much do you have after we have removed, if you took a loan for the business, the cost of that loan, we take it out. The cost of taxes, we take it out. Then we talk, talk cost of, you know, if you buy equipment and all, depreciation cost, I won't go into that. We take it out. That's a bit that. Most of you here, how many of you here would love to have in your business someone to come and invest a million dollars? Put your hand up. You want someone to come and invest a million dollars? You want someone to come and say, how many of you have actually tried to get funding for your business? One challenge you have is people to give you money to run your business. Can I see you? are looking at that. Nobody is going to give you a dime if they don't know your numbers. The only people that we give you are, one, your father. <laughs> you understand? Family. And check it very well. They won't give you a lot. There is, listen, listen to me. The amount of volume in terms of cash investment you can command, all right? When it is investment, it is different from when it is a uh, uh, harms. Pity. Hey, yeah, uh, ah. I'm a young child. Nigeria is really tough. Won't she high health business? I just support there. Ah, hello, no need. 50 million naira investment. Ah, ah, you are you are very ambitious. Ah, okay, okay. You know what? You know what? I'm doing one or two things. About 500k. Let me tell you something. That person that gave you 500k, if you came with a compact business proposition, they will come in as a partner and put in 50, 25%, 50% of the money. Because now, they are looking to get money back. So you need to make presentation, a case for them to say that, listen, you can trust me with your money. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. So, 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 after EBITDA, we talk about um, interest repayments. So the earnings before all that. Then we talk about, after we take out interest repayment, profit before tax, 41.3 million. All right? Then we take tax out. So that means the amount you have that Cervante actually can say, this is my profit, this is the amount retained in the business, is 33 million. Are you getting what I'm saying? 33 million. That's a profitable business. 
So when you are going to ask someone, I want you to invest in my business, you, are, you come to church here, listen, look at it. Which one is better? For you to just come to church, you are a business person. Come to church. Father, bless my business. Father, bless my business. Father, bless my business. In Jesus' name. Then people pray, receive increase. Amen. This week you will sell. Amen. I want, you to, I want to take you beyond that one. Come and say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive, all right, 50% year-on-year increase in revenue. Hallelujah. All right? At a 30% PBT margin in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you saying what I'm talking about? You are speaking in specifics now. So when the answer comes, you know that you got the answer. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I should be asking as a business, ah, things are, oh, things are moving. And you ought to are saying, but things are moving. Ah, uh, uh, you see, last week, eh? Last week, you are not a market woman. Even if you are in a market here, you are in this place and in a market, you are not a market woman. You are going to move you from that thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you think differently. So let's look at some definitions quickly. Next slide. Are you learning something? Now, listen. A lot of us actually are, uh, need to move to the next level in terms of the business that we do. Okay? You are looking to, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, if you bless me, I'll do this, do this, do this. But you see, you are trying to grow organically. All right? You are trying to, oh, one money, you see, yeah, this, 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 you know, you know you're trying to grow organically. But the truth about it is, true growth will come if you understand what capital is and how you can deploy capital. So I've made it very simple for you to understand. So, Capital is a resource used to generate value. Any material that can be used to generate revenue can be defined as capital. So you have money, patents. I don't know if, I, is there anybody here that is into, uh, if you are a creative person, you have a program you have written, a software you have written. One of the things you should know how to do as a creative person is to know how to apply for patents that this is your intellectual property because intellectual property is capital. Amen? Yes. yes. Don't go on. You got an idea. God gave you something. You designed something unique. You are now telling your friends. You understand? Or you are now looking for investor. You've not patented it. They will steal it from you. They will steal it from you. Hallelujah. They will steal it from you. You're a video uh, uh, DOP. Is that what they call them? <laughs> right? DOP and so on. You know, uh, you, you, you have a concept for a video. You've written the script. Make sure you learn how to copyright it. Copyright it. So that if somebody else does that thing, all right, you put a copyright infringement on it. How many of you have put stuff on YouTube and used a song, and they will now tell you you cannot monetize it because someone else owns it? Exactly. That is, you know, intellectual property, property protection. Because IP is capital. Hallelujah. For many people, you can actually, in many countries, you can actually go to a bank and surrender your IP as collateral to take a loan. Many people don't know this. Outside of the country, Nigeria doesn't do it yet. So you need to understand how capital works. Praise God. I, I, I realize this is salmon is not for everybody. Not everybody wants to succeed. Praise God. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, so not everyone wants to succeed. So some people want to say, I thought, look, Pastor, what this one is saying? Look, if I just have a good man in my life, what, this, what are you saying? Let that good man learn all these things you are learning. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not raising, I'm not, I'm not interested in raising those kind of women. You understand? Now, you're fine to be in Oikia, okay? All right? House, being a housewife is fine. But I want you to be a housewife that has sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A housewife that has sense. You can be a housewife and generate revenue. You don't have to be wearing corporate this thing to generate. No, you can be a housewife and generate revenue. You can be a housewife and put knowledge in your head. Praise God. There's a particular actor. It's popular. I'm not mentioning anybody's names. I'm just telling you a story. If you say any name, that's your business. There's a particular actor, all right? <laughs> so I think he had a wife. She supported him and all that, but she was a housewife. You understand? Now, I don't know what her education status is, but, uh, but I just noticed that it was easy for this actor to move on from her and marry somebody else and said that he was a second wife, and she should accept it. 
She wisened up. She didn't accept it. She went for training, started marketing, you know, her business and all that. She separated from the person. It was easy for that guy to walk away because in his mind, what is she going to offer him? Are you getting what I'm saying? What is she going to offer him? She couldn't, you understand? He was thinking, I can't, if I take her to a place where my people are, she cannot, she doesn't blend in. She doesn't stand out. What is she going to offer? So do not, as a woman, ever, ever accept a scenario where you are just existing and not growing. You understand? The only thing you offer is sex and food. Don't be that way. You understand? Offer insight. In, when they are talking with you. The person says, oh, wow, see wife. Are you going to understand? The quality of conversations that can be had with you, informed by your ever-growing body of truth, knowledge. And as a man, the only thing you know how to say when you are with the opposite sex is, man, baby, you are beautiful. Nah, man, Kai. I will spoil you, Bonnie. You don't have money. I will spoil you. <laughs> don't worry. Today is bleak. Tomorrow will be better. Oh, God. Let's talk. Praise the Lord. Let's talk. Let's talk about books we are reading. Glory to God. Listen, there are many stupid people in this world. Don't, don't start a family and mass multiply stupid people. Do you understand? Amen. Nothing is in your head. Nothing is in the head of the person you want to marry. You people marry. You now create children. Nothing is all of their head. We are too many stupid people in this world. We need to reduce the population of stupid people. Amen. Amen. Put knowledge in your head. That's your advantage. With Holy Ghost and knowledge, you are dangerous, sir. Hallelujah. You have word of the Lord, word of wisdom, word of knowledge working, but you don't know how to speak the industry's language. You now want to let you become a prophesying to them. They will thank you for your prophecy and show you the door. We want to talk industry now. Even if you gave them word of knowledge concerning what will happen in the future, you don't know how to speak technical language. After they finish everything, they will thank you. They can say, ah, he's a man of God. Let's give him seed and drink. God bless you, sir. Eh? Amen. We oh, yeah, are outside. We want to talk. Can you, you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. So capital is a resource used to generate value. Any material that can, that can be used to generate revenue can be defined as capital. It's the money, patent, assets. Capital can come in two main forms. Debt or equity. A lot of people have said things like, I will never borrow in the name of Jesus. Bad prayer. Let me say it again. <laughs> it is a terrible prayer. It is an uninformed prayer. And I will tell you why. Whether you take debt to, you don't take debt to, you are paying for debt. You are. You see, the, 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 the phone... You are, but you are using Samsung, Apple, all those things that you are buying. The company you are buying them for, they took debt. They factored in that debt in the cost of that phone. You are buying Pando Yam. Pando Yam. Ah, I like Burger King. Oh my God. Oh my God. They are taking debt. I even know you understand. They are taking debt. They take debt. And it is you that is paying for that debt by patronizing their services. So you take debt, though. You don't take debt, though. You are paying for debt. Praise the Lord. Debt is OPM, other people's money. What is bad is for you to take debt to finance something that is not producing revenue. You understand? Ah, pull me 700,000. I want to buy this Brazilian air. That is stupid debt. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the Brazilian air is not going to produce revenue. It's fake life. Glory to God. All right? You, you have to get, you say, borrow me this money. I want to. You don't have a job, you have a business, but you are borrowing money to buy a car. That's stupid. Using debt to rent. Stupid. You are not generating revenue from your. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have a house, you want to upgrade your apartment through debt. That's stupid. No, not that kind of debt. I'm talking about debt to increase your revenue. Hallelujah. For a business, that's good debt. All right? So capital can be either debt or equity. What is equity? Equity is where, you, you know, you don't, you get debt 
but you don't get it from a bank. Okay? So you get people to invest in your company. They give you the money, but you don't really pay them interests. They have ownership in your company. All right? All right? Then what they get for that ownership is called dividends. So you declare, this is how much we made, then they get dividends. That's equity. It's patient money. It is better than debt. Because someone can come and invest a hundred million dollars into your company. I'm mentioning these numbers intentionally for your mind. Because some of you, you can accept hundred million, well, hundred million naira in your head. But when you start talking dollars, you can't conceptualize it. I want you to conceptualize it. Praise God. Because you will attract it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. A person comes and says, $100 million with, at a $1 billion value, valuation. That means 10% ownership in your business. You must be comfortable with equity. 100% of zero is what? Zero. Now, I must own it all right. Own what all right? 100% zero. How much did he make last, week, last year? 500000 Naira. And you want to order? No. Why don't you accept equity into the business? And we are now talking revenues of 100 million. And you still have maybe 30% of the company or 40% of the company. 40% of 100 million. Is not better than 100% of zero? Praise God. You think equity. When you start structuring your business and start doing things this way, believe me, this is an less fair attitude you have. You will stop it. You will be praying and you will be working. Praise God. I said, Praise God. All right, so debt to banks can come at interest, fixed interest rate or variable interest rate. Businesses must use capital in order to create. So once you have sorted out all these things, you know, and you've gotten capital, you know, your prayer is now on something. The prophetic declaration is now on what? On something. Not prophetic declaration on nothing. Praise God. Last week, I'm going to show you how that some of us that have had the privilege of having a millionaire or two millionaire or three millionaire, I'm going to show you that if you are patient and understand how money works and understand the compound interest of money, you will find out that you could be at a much, much better place if you understand the principle and you work those principles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we continue? Next slide. Are you getting value? Are you learning something? So, what you have to understand is you have to ensure that you understand that capital works and structure your business or whatever it is you are doing to be able to have capital. Stop looking for free money. Stop looking for I beg go money. Look for money that comes to you because of the value you are offering. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I, you understand what I'm saying? Value. Think value. What value am I bringing to the table? If the answer is zero, how can I be a person that can bring what? Value to the table. Listen, recently, how many of you have heard of recently, this guy, OpenAI, released something where somebody is speaking in English or speaking in Spanish. You can just press a button and say, I want to hear it in, Spanish, in English, and it should... You understand? I want to hear it in French if you translate. I want to hear it. Do you say? And it is not going to be that somebody or another voice is the one translating it for you. No, it is the person's voice that will just move the same person, the voice, the same texture, the same mannerisms. That's how it will be sounding. Do you know what it has, it has closed the need for translators and interpreters? Are you following what I'm saying? So, anyone that went to go and read BSC French. He's just going, no, he's going to be learning French from just personal. I don't want to know how to be saying, le pas, le pas, le pas, le pas, you know. C'est français, c'est français, c'est français. It will have no value in the market because I don't need to learn it if I want to deploy that function. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, someone that read that course currently has to now begin to think, how can I use this thing? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Because there's opportunity in everything. Glory to God. All right. Assets. Remember we said. So, remember that analogy? Rain is falling, you carry buckets, and you collect the water. Right? God is sending, you know, from time to time, sending blessings your way. What do you do with it? 
The average Nigerian person, all right, who may have been abused mentally, glory to God, all right, now, listen, if you have a lot of issues with your psychology and all that, we will have always have this defeatist mentality. You need to work on your mindset. Because that, if you have the wrong mindset, it's going to really affect you. Praise God. It will really affect you. It will really affect you a whole lot. A whole lot. Now, let's look at the difference between an asset and a liability. Right? Assets and liabilities. Everyone here, hear me very well. You must begin to think around assets and liabilities. You invest in assets, praise God, and you use liabilities to generate revenue. That is how your thinking should be. Praise God. Now, notice, if you're an accounting person here, I have used the context of assets and liabilities from financial terms. I have not used it in this way some other people um, use it. So what is an asset? An asset is any resource that can be used to generate revenue. There are majorly two types of assets, current assets and fixed assets. Current assets are things that you can easily convert into money. And let me talk to you about that for a bit. If you have any free cash right now, maybe you are earning or you can cut your expenses to generate free cash, I, I want to advise you, well, no, I, I'm, this, I'm not giving you financial advice, but let me just say, it would be wise for you to invest in certain instruments right now that can appreciate in value, all right? You know, you have things like bonds, you have things like fixed deposits, you have money market funds that you can put money into and your returns will be somewhere between 18 and 27% per annum. Because the Naira is losing value and you need something that you can put money into that will reduce the rate of loss of money that you have, praise God. Another thing that would be good for you to do, invest in some fixed assets too, all right, like land. Okay? Land. You have five million or six million, don't change your car. Go and buy land. Go and buy what? Go and buy land. Buy land and wait. Is bush. Okay. Is uh, there are snakes there? No problem. <laughs> buy, <laughs> buy the land and wait. So I say, ah, the Lagos State government is telling people something, something, calm down. Just go and do your verification. Make sure there is, it's free, not just buy. Glory to God. Buy and wait. You need to have some financial sense. Glory to God. Buy and wait. Listen, everybody, look at me. Everybody here, you need to have a piece of land that has your name on it. Praise God. Walk towards it. Have a piece of land that has your name on it. I don't want to start going into details because there is a lot you can do with that. You get. All right? So, current assets are assets that can easily convert to cash. Fixed assets are asset forms that are not easily converted to cash, but are essential factors of factories, building, machinery, vehicles, land also is in that category. Now, a business is said to be liquid where there is abundance of current assets. That means you have abundance of cash. You understand? But it is usually wise you have abundance of cash for you to convert some into fixed assets that will help you produce even more cash. A company with much fixed assets and not much liquidity can use said assets to generate cash. Next verse, what's liabilities? Quickly, because of time. All right. Liabilities. This has to do with debt. Liabilities can either be current or non-current. Current liabilities are debt obligations due within 12 months. That means you take a debt that you have to pay back. Now, now guys, look at me. Do you know there are a lot of people that are um, falling for these um, scams? I, I call them scams, but they are legit businesses where you, are, you can borrow money. How many of you have ever borrowed money from all these phone stuff, these apps, loan apps? How many have done it? I, I don't know. I saw our church now. Lift up your hands in the air so that we can be liberated. How many have done it? Uh -huh, you have done it. Now, one of the worst places you can get loan from is those people that if you default, they will send message to your entire <laughs> and say, behold, so, 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 and so person is a debtor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, what those guys are doing is this. Look, when economy, the economy is bad, those kind of loan apps make money. They will charge you very high interest rates. Some of them is like 50%, 60%. Yes, 
interest rate. Crazy interest rate because you are desperate. There are people that actually take advantage for when things are bad are gambling houses. Naira, bet, all those people. All right? And all this because you say, ah, I just have 200 naira. If I just buy bread and eat, the 200 naira go. But if I go and bet on Arsenal versus, New Gas- uh, Arsenal versus Newcastle, all right, I might win. So you take your 200 naira. So the gambling houses are making billions from the very poor people. The rich people don't put their money there. It's people that don't have much financial knowledge and are hoping because they are desperate that put their money in gambling. Are you following what I'm saying? But you see, you cannot bet against the house and win. The gambling person set up that business to take your money, not to give you money. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That is why you went, they said, they said you must, there are 15 this thing. You must guess this one, right? This one, right? This one, right? This one. Then the 15th one, you were there. It's in one league, in the third division of Sweden. And you were there looking at it. Groningen versus Gong Gong Gong. And you're saying, and at some point, you are there. Hey, make it no cut. Oh. Make it no cut. You are watching. Make it no cut. They don't even, you can't even watch it on television. And what many people don't know is that some of those gambling houses are fixed those matches. They don't know. They are waiting for, hey, it's 1-1. One, one. Hey, if it's 1-1, one, one, I will both to score. It's both to score. Oh, oh, oh. 91st minute. Someone just plays one shot. Goalkeeper catches the ball and it ends if the throws is inside the net and begins to do like this. Hey. Then you know, say, say, fix it, they fix it. Nonsense, corruption. You lost your money. Yes. So you need to be smart. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Listen to me. Oh. This kind of service, you may not look very spiritual, eh? but pay attention to what I'm telling you. The decisions you make will define your future. Your money decisions. Glory to God. I say, man, if you marry a woman that does not have financial sense, she will ruin you. Did you hear what I said? As a man, if you, as a woman, if you marry a man that, that does not have financial sense, he will, he will ruin you. Let me tell you, everyone here, listen. If you are married and you buy assets, it is in your best interest. Obviously, you're married. You are, you are staying together till Jesus come or you. One of you die now. <laughs> it's in your best interest to acquire assets in both of your names so that legally both of you own it. Don't go and ask, acquire assets as a man in your name. Eh? Then put your wife as net of king. If anything happens to you, bro, your wife is not getting that property. You. There is a complicated legal step before she can get it. Praise God. Your family can show up and take it from her. And your children and your wife are All right? Hoping that people that were not there doing the struggle show up. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So you must understand these things. Praise God. Praise God. So liabilities can either be current or non-current. Current liabilities are debt obligation within 12 months. Non-current liabilities are debt obligation due over 12 months. You should get debt that helps you generate revenue. That is if you need the debt. If you are able to get equity, people that believe in your business and say, I want to be a shareholder in your business. Hallelujah. And I will invest $5 million, I will invest $2 million, and you, understand, you, don't go, you need to go to the bank. And you use that to generate revenue. Glory to God. Now, I want to advise. If you are going to do any kind of business, all right, it is wise for you to do business as cash flow, daily cash flow. Things that will generate money every single day. Not all these businesses that are, are for Instagram. You know, nice picture. You know, then this, you are standing like this, you are the CEO, can you come, can you come? In, <laughs> you're not doing like this, you're not, you know, why are you into? I'm into the, um, into, um, into um, the design of the futuristic something process. Leave that one for Kunle showing your, you understand? He's the one that knows how to say, he's the futurist and he's eating. You don't know what you are saying. Do, look, say Gary, amen. 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 Listen, if you set up a Gary selling business and you are selling it on Instagram with, free, with delivery to the, anywhere across Lagos, you will make money every day. Gary, are you what I'm saying? Say Pando Yam. Create your own something supermarket on Instagram. Go and work with logistic people. Oh yeah, order your Gary for me. Glory to God. If you make 5,000 every single day profit, that's 150. 
Glory to God every month. If you're able to increase it to 50, all right, you're moving. Daily cash flow. Stop all this sophisticated rubbish. People are hungry. Inflation is at 4%. You are talking sophistication. You want to sell television that can speak to me. I want to, I don't care. <laughs> are you even know what I'm saying? Sell something we can, you understand? Sell Indomie, whatever. Sell something that we used to survive. Sell salts. Are you even know what I'm saying? Get cash flow. If you're a person that you're a service person, you know, medical person, service person, you have to think about how can I convert this service to a daily cash flow business. It, I don't have to be, you know, a, a service person as a doctor. Now, you have to sit across a patient for you to make money. The person has to come to you. Why? You, you, you'll be hungry. People, this is a good time. You understand? Drugs are expensive. Hospital is expensive. If somebody feels, ah, you say, I feel like man. <laughs> you understand? And <laughs> that's the truth. All right? Or you say, give me daily scripture. You understand? <laughs> healing scripture. You will listen to healing scripture. You say, yes, glory to God. I am healed. <laughs> He's not going to come to you first. He's hungry. He, you know, he will look for other means of getting healed. So you need to find other ways. Praise God. I hope you are getting something. <laughs> I just took, I'm taking this time out to, you know, before I go back to our uh, heavenly uh, classroom that we are always used to, you understand? Listen, no. Aha. So liabilities are major factor in general. They should be taken after chemical consideration to expand already existing cash flow. So listen to me. If you're a business person, only take debt to expand cash flow. Do not take debt when there is no cash flow. Praise God. Yeah, don't borrow if there is no cash flow. If there is no cash flow, that means the proof of the concept of your business is not working. Look for something that has cash flow in that. Praise God. So I don't want us to be praying for increase without sense. God is not a stupid God. Don't let us make God one funny. He's not a babalawo. Amen? Amen? He's not. Think about what can I do? How can I get this to work? The concept of hard work must come back. Then knowledge and wisdom, it must come back. Understanding how things work. You must understand it. Hallelujah. You must understand it. Understand how things work. Understand it. Inflation is 34%. Do you know what's going to happen? The CBN is going to increase interest rates. Things are going to be more expensive again. Hallelujah. Yes. You say, this is terrible. Well, tidumbo. No, shut up. That's not what you think. If the CBN increase interest rate, if you listen to me, if you hear a news very soon and you hear something like MPR has gone up, what do you do? Simple. If MPR goes up, it means that banks will not be able to lend. All right? They want to collect money from you. And they will want to collect money from you and they will say, we will give you interest in return. So anybody here that has money in any kind of account, where the, what your bank is giving you is zero, and every month, GTB is sending you a love letter, saying, Paka, something, service, something. Paka, so, no. Go to your bank and say, sorry, I want my money in an account where I'm going to get what? Returns. No, your account is not that kind of account. You are going to make it that kind of account now. Yes, you are going to make it that kind of account now. You understand? Which one? You are using current unit, okay, savings. Well, let's change it to savings. Hey, this one, let's change it there. That's number one. Number two, this is free advert. Go to banks. I'm not going to advertise any bank. Amen. Go to any bank that has an asset management arm. People are looking at me and look at Better write. <laughs> Go and, to an asset management arm and say you want to open an investment account. Okay? When they open that account for you, they will give you an account number. You'll be sending money into that account. And listen to me, you will be getting as high currently as 20% returns on your money per annum. It's not something that just happened. It has been, listen, I'm telling you, that has been on for a very long time. You are the one that is not aware. Amen. Yeah, that's what they were going to give you on that money. 
So if they come out and say MPR has gone by this, they will increase that one. You don't need to apply. They will increase it. Because they want to get money into their position. Because when the CBM begins to increase, money becomes expensive. So they need money in the banking system. All right? So you go and put your money there at that high interest rate. That's one. Number two, how many of you got any message from or email from your bank talking to you about bonds? Every first week of the month. You always get something about if you're interested in bonds. How many of you got? Stan Bick was sending you that. That's what it's about. Go there and say, yeah, let's talk about this bonds thing. How far? Because with bonds, all right, it's, look, all these investments I'm mentioning, you cannot lose your money. It is called risk-free. Risk what? Free. Can't lose your money. You can put the money in bond. You can't lose it. It's federal government. Naira bond, they will print Naira to give you back your money. So it's all like this country understands how this system works. So you pray, you speak in tongues, you prophesy, but you carry sense also on one hand. Knowledge and wisdom. Don't, don't be moving around. No. Knowledge. Praise God. Have you learned something? Yes, sir. Let me wrap up. So go there, get those details. Don't go and put your money in nonsense. Glory to God. <laughs> so now, get quick, get rich quick schemes. Invest five million. You get 100% in six weeks. Put it. <laughs> Put it. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> After that person has got your boy, you should tell that person you've been singing. He will play a song. No. Move all the one more. Glory, glory. Now he don't play a song. <laughs> he has calmed you. Then you will need a therapist to talk it through. And I have a wonderful therapist in the house. Her name is Sandy Brown. She will listen to you. She will cross her leg listen to you. How does, it, how does losing the money make you feel? Yeah. You know, I want to kill myself. I was so stupid. Wow, no, don't kill yourself. All right. There is opportunity. When there's life, there's hope. Tomorrow. <laughs> don't put your money in those kind of schemes. You know all those? Uh, I forgot all those ones. This thing. They say you come to an after. They, all those ones that they say, um, you, bring, you bring your own money, then you bring another person under you. So basically, they scammed you. Oh, yeah. Let us scam your mother. Let us scam your father. Let us scam your friends. Let's scam everybody so that we create a whole community we've scammed. Don't fall for it. Put your money in sensible places. Don't be greedy. Don't try to get rich quick. Use your head. Praise God. Amen. Now let's wrap up. Ah, I don't have that much time. Now let's talk about contentment and explain it. First Timothy chapter 6. I just close here. Next five minutes. First Timothy six, six to nine. Are you there? Please, oh, do something with the information I've given you. Praise the Lord. Do something with the information I've given you. If God blesses you, you are able to. You know, you raise. Maybe you have fifty million naira. Fifty million naira. How many of you know? That with 50 million naira, you can take one financial decision that would ensure that you get 10 million naira every year without doing an extra work, and you will still have that 50 million naira. Just one financial decision. One. Just one financial decision. A particular gentleman died. He did some investments. And he, had, he did some investment with his friend, who was an investment manager. Both of them were Christians. He died in an accident. Everybody was crying, it's terrible. Oh, terrible, this is bad, because he, did, he died young. All right? But that friend said, this is what we're going to do for this guy. He had investment. So they took, instead of taking the investment, selling it, you know, liquidating it and giving it to the wife, they sat down with the wife and all that and said, let us create a trust for you and the children. So they took the money, created a trust, and put it in investments. That trust, the returns on that trust, because when he died, the children were eight and six years old. 
Okay? That trust, the investment from that trust, was what they used to send the children to school and take care of the wife till the children became 25. Yet, the capital, which was the money the man left, did not reduce. So even though the man was dead 17 years, he was alive to his children. It was not prayer. It was sense. So, amen. Amen. Religion is going to finish you if you don't understand what true religion is. Religion does not have anything to do with stupidity. So this one we are doing in Nigeria, everybody is stupid, but they go to church. That is not really the, 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 the Jesus religion. So don't mix it up. Don't be saying Nigeria, mm, leave the religion, the facade we are doing, and spirituality. Don't confuse it. True religion is spiritual. It has wisdom inside. Amen? Amen. All right, so let us wrap up. Contentment and complacency. First Timothy 6, verse 6 to 9. First Timothy 6, verse 6 to 9. Can we read from verse 6? One to go, what does it say? Very important. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay? Continue. Next verse, it says what? Yes. Yes. Next verse, now it says what? Let us be there with... Notice something. Notice something. It says, having food and what? Having food and what? So, if I don't have food and raiment, it means I should be discontent, right? No, why are you shaking your head? That's not what he's saying. Well, I'm not saying this thing. Basically, what Paul is saying here, because some people have misunderstood this thing, what they think this man is saying is that just be there. Don't have drive. You understand? You are not promoted for the past 15 years. Don't worry about it. Just be there. No drive, no... That's not what he's saying. You see, what contentment is, is you don't lose your equilibrium. You don't lose your peace. You are not derailed because of what you don't yet have. Are you following? You are at peace at every level you are in part time. Are you following what I'm saying? You are not going to break the law. You are not going to go outside of God's will because of what you don't have. That's contentment. So I have food. I have clothing, I have house, I'm okay, I'm at peace. But you see, there is also complacency. Complacency is this. God has given you the land, but you have not yet possessed it. You are content. Are you following what I'm saying? You are content to say, yeah, eh, no problem, God has given it to me, but... I'm just going to remain where I am. No. That is complacency. There is a difference. So, contentment and complacency must be interpreted via the lens of what has God given you. If God has said, Mr. Man, I want to bless you. You are not the one hustling for it. He said, I am the one giving this to you. And the reason why I'm giving this to you is to be a kingdom financier, for you to take care of widows, to take care of... Imagine, guys, listen. Imagine if God blesses you with a billion dollars. Praise God. Can you picture it? No, you, 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 I know you can't picture it because you didn't shout or say, yes, glory. You know, if I say you receive a new car, you will shout, yes, because you can picture it. Your faith can receive it. But that one billion, you say, that's what big it. So let me say it again. <laughs> if God bless you with a billion dollars, right? And you want to, you, you, they still didn't get glory, it. Glory. <laughs> Now, if God bless you with, listen, if God bless you with a billion dollars, and, and he says, I want you to take care of widows and orphans. Right? Yes, sir. I want to take care of widows and orphans and feed them. There is the ignorant way to do it. Then there's the wisdom way to do it. Let me tell you what the ignorant way to do it is. The Nigerian politician way. You buy rice. <laughs> you buy rice. Then you put banner, widow support program. Yes. Then all of them will line up and they will carry the rice. Then you play music for them. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That rubbish. It's nonsense. You don't need to listen. Listen. That's the ignorant ways to do it. All right? You don't need to advertise what you are doing for people. 
Okay? Let me tell you how it is. You see that one billion? You take 10% out of it. 10% of one billion is what? $100 million. Good. You will go and set up a widow support trust fund. You will give that widow support trust fund, put, give it to a trustee. You set up a board of trustee to administer that fund. They will invest that $100 million. That $100 million will generate between $10 million to $20 million per what? Per annum. You will now identify those widows. Okay? Maybe you want to support 1,000 of them till they die. No one off. They are on pension. Till they die, they will get money. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So that other million dollars, we generate 10 to 20 million dollars every per annum. And every month, those women are getting a lot. No need for pictures, stupid dances, and so They will be getting a lot like that. It's coming there. You can even call it for business support, micro, micro assistance, for them to get to set up it. So whatever you want to do, it, you're, sure, you're giving them that money. Guess what? The $100 million is not going down. Yeah. It still remains. It's in the trust fund. What you are supporting them with is the ROI on the $100 million. Are you going to get what I'm saying? See, a lot of unbelievers, they are doing this, you know, but they are using it to support evil things. So you that you have the spirit of God inside, your head cannot be empty. You must know how things work. That tongue you are speaking, you must add wisdom to it. Praise God. God is not wicked though. His people are just stupid. Rise up on your feet. Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash God has blessed you.